Now after the uniform noise model, we have this model called as Gaussian noise. So the probability density function of the uh, this Gaussian noise is given over here, right? So it just says that P of Z is equals to 1 divided by under root of 2 pi and sigma. So sigma is out of this under root. Then it is e to the power minus z minus mu square divided by 2 sigma square. So here mu is the mean and uh, sigma square is the variance but this just looks somehow a bit difficult to learn right so here i have written uh, an easy way to learn it so this is 1 by under root of 2 pi sigma square e to the power minus 1 by 2 z minus mu divided by sigma whole square so this is literally very easy way to learn the gaussian noise and uh, are you just interested in that how will this graph look for this particular function you have already done Gaussian in the smoothing filters, right? So we have noticed that this is the Gaussian graph. So this is a bell-shaped graph. And this is just like the normal distribution where uh, you have the mean uh, centered at zero and you don't have any variance, right? Okay, one question. Do you know that what does variance mean? So where does variance stand for over here? See, the variance is about that if you have an image and in the image, and let's just take the grayscale image, right? You have intensity values from 0 to 255. If all the intensity values are fixed, say 127, so it's all gray image, correct one thing. Second thing, there is no variance because variance is all about that how much they vary from mean value. So one thing you just uh, need to know that in the Gaussian noise, this is going to be a bell-shaped curve, which looks just like that of the normal distribution. This is the mu, which is the mean. This is mu minus sigma. This is mu plus sigma. This is the z and pz. Now, one question which arises is that corresponding to mu, the value of pz is this, and corresponding to mu minus sigma and mu plus sigma, this is 0 0.607 divided by this thing right so how these two terms just came right so look into this for the gaussian noise the pdf is given by p of z is equal to this so i have used the formula which i said that this is easier to learn with now here just try to put mu in place of z so when you put mu this is mu minus mu gives zero anything to the by zero is what one so this is 1 by under root of 2 pi sigma square. So if you take sigma outside the root, it will be 1 by 2 under root of 2 pi sigma. So that's how it justifies this value. Talk about how about this value. Again, just put z is equal to mu plus minus sigma. This mu gets cancelled with mu. This is plus minus sigma. So this is 1. So plus minus 1 square is definitely going to be 1. So e to the power minus 1 by 2 under root of 2 pi sigma square. So the value of e to the power minus 1 by 2 is 0 0.607. That's how you got the second value, right? So I hope everything is clear till now. And this is the graph, how you get a graph. One thing is that it's a mathematical thing that if you just see the interval from mu minus sigma to mu plus sigma, that is this region, this whole region, right? So between this region, nearly 70% of the values lie. And here, after some time, here, nearly here, there will be mu minus 2 sigma and here will be mu plus 2 sigma. So, whole of the region within this will constitute nearly 95% of the distribution. We generally don't go beyond it, right? But, okay, this is all the mathematical things about Gaussian noise, but we are just doing image processing. So, what about this Gaussian noise and the image processing, right? So here it is. Talking about uh, Gaussian noise, this is the most common noise model. Could you just uh, pause the video and think for a minute that why Gaussian noise model is most common one? Like the hint is that when I was explaining to you the histograms, I made you memorize the graphs in certain way. Just remember. And the another hint is it's written, it is a good approximation of other noise models. See, when we did Gaussian, we just said that it has a bell-shaped curve, right? 
for the relay if you remember that i said in the relay it is going to be same as gaussian here this portion will be same as gaussian just that it will be steeper on this side that's it and the erlang will be same as relay just the difference being that the pz value it will have certain displacement p of z won't be zero so kind of other models can also be approximated as gaussian noise model that is the reason it is the most common noise model because all like some not all like some noise models can be approximated as gaussian noise model but why are we approximating it with the gaussian noise model is that mathematically gaussian noise model is easy to work with like we'll be calculating the mean variance like we'll be coming on to this right so we'll be calculating the mean and variance uh well you can leave the mean and variance for uh this or i'll just put the link in the description below to tell you that how the mean and the variance are calculated for this particular function so mathematically it's very easy to work with gaussian model but again as i said that why are we studying it in image processing one thing is that though we are going to approximate the other noise models into the gaussian noise model but this is something which is not appearing in any real physical devices generally so what does it means is that uh, like there are certain uh, ways where the noise gets introduced just like we saw in the previous video that in uniform noise it gets introduced while uh, the quantization process takes place so there will be other also processes in which the noises may get introduced but generally if i talk about the gaussian noise it's not associated with any real physical devices except one thing right so what is that one thing which occurs so the noise in the amplification circuit results in gaussian noise so what is like this amplification circuit and where do we use this amplification circuit where this gaussian noise gets introduced okay just imagine that uh, the process of image acquisition in throughout the process of image acquisition uh, we acquire the image and then we digitalize the image and in digitalization we go for sampling and quantization and during the quantization the uniform noise get introduced which which we just did in previous video but there is one thing when uh, the image is acquired and you have a image sensor right you have a camera sensor which is going to sense the intensity falling on right so you know that as per the voltage which is formed that's how we get the intensity values now at midst of the camera sensor and the quantizer we have the amplification circuit over there so we need to amplify the signal which is uh, which the camera sensor gets because what happens is when you acquire the image uh, there will be light reflected by any particular device so say i just want to click the photograph of a bulb i'll capture the image now how will it just go inside the camera lens and all how it all happens is the light which is being reflected by that bulb is captured by the camera sense sensor and then that, that is how it further goes so that is definitely light which is not so much so we do need the amplification circuit but what happens during amplification is that the gaussian noise gets introduced but why we say that it's not appearing in any real physical device because this noise is quite less you also know that the noise due to amplification those who are of uh, who have studied the signal processing they well know that the amplification noise is not much right so that is where we get this gaussian noise so that's all about the gaussian noise if you want to know that how to calculate the mean and variance of the gaussian noise the link is given in the description below thank you so much and have a nice day